Hi guys, today we're going to build a game called Frogger. Uh, the goal of the game is uh, to have a frog and move it over to the other side of the game world and uh, try not to hit any moving objects. So we're going to do, uh, well, it's pretty much what we always do, create a package and the uh, main for the uh, app class, which is going to extend our JavaFX application. Set scene, new scene, create content. So this is the, the typical stuff that we do all the time. Current, create content. We're going to define our root node, which is going to be a simple pane. Set preferred size um, 800, 600. This will define our window size. Right, uh, we need to have a reference to a frog, which is going to be just simple node. Uh, what else? List of nodes for moving objects. Um, I'm going to call them cars because I think they are um, in the original game. I'm not sure. Need a method that will generate us a frog. So I'll create a frog. So in it, frog. Uh, we need one. We need another one for. Um, it car. Right, there is a um, main method missing, which we need to have um, if we're not using an ID that um, if we if you're if you're using an ID which doesn't see um, JavaFX application as a entry point, then you can um, add just public static void main, which will then be recognized as the entry point of the application. Right, frog, and if frog, root get children add our frog. And our frog is going to be just a simple rectangle. Um, Let's do 39, uh, 38 because um, we don't want the bounding box to be full 40 pixels um, if we're going to use 40 pixels as the tile size because otherwise they will just simply clip and we don't want that. Color uh, green. So the spawn position, if we move it over to um, 600 minus 39. This will place it perfectly between the tile borders. So if you think of a tile being 40 in height and width, this will place it perfectly in the middle. Uh, well, almost, because we're not setting X. We're not, we're not really worried about X at the moment. And it car, yeah, the rectangle. I want to use software generated um, shapes, but then um, if you want to extend, simply add a few sprites and then use image view if you want to. New rectangle, this is going to be full 40 and color red to signify that it's um, a hostile return rectangle. Actually, I think it would be easier if we do spawn car instead. So we return the rectangle object, um, but we also add it to the root node so that we don't need to do that um, afterwards. Translate x um, zero is fine. Y is going to be um, I'm going to do a random and then multiply that by so if it's 40 then we have 600 divided by 40 15 
we don't want the last row, so it's 15 minus 1, which is 14. And that should give us 0 to 13, because if you remember, random doesn't return, um, it's exclusive. So I'll return maximum 0 0.99 and so on, which should give us um, the value that we need. So it's going to be 0 0.0, 13, and if we multiply it by 40, that fits perfectly um, fine, I think. Yes. Um, what else? We need uh, we need some sort of timer, and we're going to do animation timer, which is the easiest one. Might as well do it here. Timer, new animation timer. Um, so this um, callback will be called every six um, every one sixtieth of a second. So if we do an update. An update, we need to update all of the entities or all of the um, game objects that we have. Um, let's start with cars. So for each car in the cars list, we are going to move it from left to right. So set translate x, get translate x plus, um, let's do random again. So it's random and we'll multiply it by some value, say 10, because that's going to be executed every um, 0 0.016 or 17 seconds, which means it's going to be quite a large value um, when it comes to a second. Right, what else? Um, we also want to spawn cars, random, um, let's get value of Set five. Um, yeah, that should do. Small car. Oh, we also need to add it to the cars list so that it's going to be updated. And we also need to check if the frog is colliding with. Uh, so let's check the state of the game. Or something similar. Uh, we need to do that for all the cars. So this is where typical collision section happens. Um, node car for all cars. If car get bounds in parent is intersecting with um, the frog's bounding box. Then we have a collision between a frog and a uh, car. So this is where you could put something like game over or take away a life. Um, what I'm going to do is simply reset the frog. I'm going to set translate x to zero, translate y to bottom of the screen, um, which is 600 minus um, 39. So is basically the spawn, the original spawn position. And we don't need to do anything, so we return from the method. Or if this stuff isn't executed, that means we're continuing and we're still in the method. So um, we check if the frog reached the other end, which is get translate y less or equal to zero. And we do some game um, game one stuff. Um, could do a simple animation of letters, I suppose. String win, um, you win. For character letter, actually, it will be beneficial if we use indices. So by less than win um, to character um, array length. Let's 
letter. This is where we get the letter. We then need to transform the letter or convert the letter into a UI object. Um, in text, we need to convert that to a string. So this will create a UI object um, on something big, something like 48. We'll also probably need some form of layout for those letters. Um, because it is quite tricky to place them manually. So I'm going to use a horizontal box. And we are going to place the box instead of the letters themselves. So set translate x something like 350, which is slightly to the left of our middle point. Same with um, the y coordinate which is going to be 250. And then we're going to add this to root node. And that in turn gets added to the horizontal box. Um, text, what else? Um, the animation, yes. Um, Fade transition duration of half a second or 066 should be fine, I think. So we are animating this node um, set to value one. So we're going to do a um, nice fade in effect. But first of all, we need to make sure that it's actually not visible. Set opacity. Zero. So this will set the visibility of the node to zero by making it transparent. And what we're going to do is animate this value to one, which is 100%, over the course of um, 0 0.66 seconds. But this will um, this will animate the whole thing um, in the same amount of time. And we want to set delay based on the index. So it will be like a wave, I think. Well, it should be um, on the on the screen anyway. So I multiplied by uh, 0 0.15. This will generate a 0 0.15 multiplied by I amount of seconds of delay for each of the animation that is going to be played. So we've added it to the uh, horizontal box, which is in turn part of the root node already. Uh, we might want to stop the timer so that things are not updated. Right, what else do I need to do? Right, input. Stage gets scene, which essentially returns the same scene object. Um, you could have defined it as a reference if you wanted to. Um, set and keep pressed. Take the event. We switch to key code to find out which key was pressed. Case W um, S. A and D. Um, it's always good to have break, um, sorry, default in there just to make sure that um, you've accounted for all possible combinations. Because um, in the future, you might have added a new layer and you may have forgotten to implement the switch. So this will kind of be like a reminder in there. Um, technically, there should be some kind of print method in there saying um, unknown switch or something. Uh, w, right. Uh, set translate y. Uh, set tra uh, get translate y and minus 40. 
So that will move it um, up. So move it down. A moves it to the left. So we're changing this to X now. And this gives us the uh, right direction. Yeah, I think that is it. Let's just try and run this. So we have our, um, there are no cars spawning though. So we have our um, frog, which is that object. Um, replacing it with a sprite um, will be nice. Um, yeah, so we need to find where we add cars which is that so translate x um, I'm assuming this is right we haven't started the timer yeah, this is why that thing wasn't executing. Um, yeah, should be right now. So these are the cars which you're not supposed to hit. And if we do hit one, we're going to be reset to our um, starting location. So I think the um, easiest method is to probably get to the right side of the screen so you can actually see cars coming at you. Um, and then you get to the top of the screen you get this kind of um okay ish animation which you could move to the left i think right uh, you could change the um number or um, the value that's using or checking um, if it should spawn a car or not to sort of play around with difficulty. Uh, this is responsible for the movement. So the larger this value is, the faster the cars. If we also have um, lives, I suppose, which will um, get reduced when you um, are hit and if you don't have any lives anymore, just say game over and do you want to start a new game or something like that. Uh, but essentially, yeah, so this is sort of the core logic of the game. Um, I believe there are two parts to the game, like you have something else um, when you get to the middle of the screen. I think there is a river or something, uh, which you could easily implement based on what we've done so far. And yeah, that was it for this tutorial. Thanks for watching.